So today I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, how to do simple song arrangements, uh, give you a few basic ideas about some strategies that you can pursue uh, when you're trying to work out uh, instrumental versions of uh, popular tunes or uh, standards. Uh, so uh, we'll start off by looking at the left hand and some choices there and uh, then move into the right hand. Uh, and uh, I want to use a tune that a student of mine asked me to teach her how to play as an example. This is a Cindy Lauper tune called uh, Time After Time. So uh, the first thing you need to do when you're working on a tune like this is to uh, figure out where you want to play uh, the verse of the tune. Uh, sometimes if you start with the introduction to a song, it can uh, put you in a place where you may not necessarily want to be uh, to work on the verse or the chorus. So I like to start working with the verse uh, as the first place. Uh, this song uh, is a nice choice for this because uh, it uses some inversions of the chords, uh, which gives you a more open kind of a tonality when you start out. So the first chord uh, is an F major chord which uh, on the stick uh, you can play uh, in a couple of different ways. Uh, you can play it uh, as uh, a, a big deep bass chord like this um, with the F down here and uh, the fifth here and the major third there. But that chord is a little bit uh, big sounding for uh, the beginning of a ballad like this. So I thought what I would do is play kind of the standard major triad shape where we have the root and we have the fifth we have the third on top uh, as a tenth, which is uh, it's right in the guitar range. Uh, this F is just uh, the F right above the uh, E on a guitar, low E. Uh, and the next chord in the verse is um, uh, uh, C major with an E in the bass, which is nice because it has a very open kind of a sound. Uh, it's not resolved uh, in the way that it would be if I played uh, C in the bass. Uh, chord. So this keeps everything kind of nice and light for the first verse. That's how it works between those two chords. Uh, so I've got uh, F major, which I'm playing. Uh, you'll notice that I'm playing with my arm angled down so that I can form the shape of the chord easily. Uh, this is one of the nice things about having the stick up in this vertical position is that it's very easy to play this kind of a chord and sustain the notes of the chord. Another thing you'll probably notice is that my hand isn't static with the fingers moving up and down like this. I actually use a little bit of energy from the hand and the arm moving side to side. I talk a lot about this kind of movement in my DVD, uh, basic free hands technique. Uh, to me, it's one of the keys to successful accompaniment work is to involve that hand and arm motion and not just park your hand in one place and use your fingers to drive the music. So here we have F major and then uh, this uh, C major over E. Oh, a couple other things you might notice about these chords. So when I play this chord I'm also playing it uh, with the first finger slightly off the fret for the F so that I can get that uh, C uh, second finger right up next to the fret. You'll notice I'm not stretching my pinky way out here to get it up next to the fret either. That's a little uncomfortable. I'd rather just keep my hand as relaxed as possible. As long as I get that little extra bit of hand movement energy in there, uh, the chord's going to sound good and the timing will be good too. So uh, there's the F major, and then we have the uh, C major over E. So I've got uh, E in the bass, C, G like that. That's how I go back and forth between those two. So it's one, two, four, one, three, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, four, one, three, two, three, one, two, four, one, three, two, three. And the important thing I want to do is to hold out that bass note of the chord as much as I can. So that's the chord uh, progression for the first part of the verse. And then the second part of the verse, it goes uh, F major to G major, and then C major over E, back to F major. And then uh, when I get to the second verse, uh, I don't want to start it um, uh, with the, uh, the C major over E. What I want to do instead is to release some of that suspension that I've got go to the C major over uh, C major with the C in the bass like that. 
And that's how I play the chords for the second verse. Now, because I'm going to play the melody pretty much the same in the second verse, uh, this gives me uh, some variety in terms of uh, what I get to play and what the audience gets to hear. Uh, so trying to find little things like this that you can change uh, will make your arrangement sound a lot more interesting. And um, uh, it'll also create a little bit of drama between um, this suspended C major and that nice big fat C uh, in the bass note there. So the second verse, that's what I'm going to play is F down to C major, F major, C major, like that. Now when uh, I get to the uh, second part of the second verse, and instead of going back to the E, I'm getting ready to go into my chorus, so I want to get some drama into it, some, uh, some extra energy, so I'm going to play an A minor instead. going A minor, and then those three notes are, are an E minor chord, but you can kind of think about them uh, as just an extension of the A minor, so that's A minor, A, E, C, and then B, okay, which is the ninth for A minor, and then G, which is the seventh, so that uh, gives me a nice uh, uh, expanded tonality for the left hand. Uh, it's a nice little bass line that'll take me right in uh, to the chorus. Uh. Uh, so there's that little last little part of the verse there uh, before it goes into the chorus. Now, for the chorus, uh, the first chord is a G major, and uh, I don't necessarily want to play that G major here because uh, the chorus should be bigger. It should have uh, more emotion to it. So instead, what I'm going to do is to play uh, a G drone there, so I'm playing, get that nice big bass note in there, and then I just play uh, the octave and the fifth there. So I've got uh, my pinky playing the G in the bass, and the octave and the fifth there. And then the next chord is an A minor chord. I'm going to do that the same way, pinky, and then uh, the octave is playing uh, by the first finger, octave and, and the uh, fifth above that there. And then it goes back to um, F major and then C major. And then um, I don't just want to sit there and play the C major as an arpeggio. I want to create a little bit more motion with that too because I'm resting in my right hand. So I'm going to and just play a little bit of a line. And then I'm really going to rest after that. Um, so. Uh, now that I've decided how I'm going to play um, these chords for the verse and the chorus, I'm going to go back and take a look at the introduction, uh, which starts out uh, with an F major, and then F, and then a G major, okay? And then it goes to the C over E, and then to the F major there. Uh, and uh, those chords are fine. Uh, but what I'm going to find when I start to work on the melody uh, for the introduction is that um, I can uh, make things a little bit more lush sounding by altering uh, one of those chords a little bit. So let's take a look at uh, the melody that starts off uh, in the introduction. Uh, and this is kind of a, uh, is my approximation of the introduction from the recording of the song. But uh, it goes... Okay, and what I want to do is to, uh, instead of just going, which is kind of thin, you know, uh, it could be thicker. Let's, let's create the sensation of things being a little bit fuller sounding, as if we had open strings or a sustain pedal. Uh, you know, we don't have those things on the stick, so we have to try to create that uh, richness of sound by keeping notes ringing as much as possible. Just like I'm leaving those bass notes down in the left hand, I can leave notes down in the right hand as well. So I'm going to play. And I'm pulling off to that uh, B there. So um, you'll notice that I'm, as soon as I play this first, uh, this octave C, I release that uh, first finger there and pull it up so that it's ready to go to play the B pull off. And then uh, um, the next line, A, C, A, and I'm going to 
let go of that A at that point. Because I can hold this one out here. And uh, what I noticed about that first line is I've got A, C, C. Well, there's an A there, and there's an A. It's the same note. Uh, so this is an opportunity for me to uh, change the chord in the left hand so I can get a little bit of a richer sound there. And uh, I like to substitute ninths and sixths and sixths, that's hard to say, ninths and sixths for uh, the third sometimes in these chords. So here's my uh, major third. I'm just going to move that down to here. And I'm going to play this chord like this instead. I'm going to play F, C, G. You notice I have to back my first finger off even more off the fret in order to be able to get all three of those fingers in there. And my uh, left arm is perpendicular to that line of the chord shape there. And again, uh, this kind of uh, arrangement of the arm and the hand and the movement, uh, I talk about it a lot on the DVD. So if you want to explore that more, uh, I'd encourage you to, to check that out. So here's the F9. Half, add nine because there's no uh, there's no seventh. So I'm playing the third there uh, in my right hand. It's a really nice sound to have those notes together. So I start the left hand first. Then I like to slide up with the left hand. Here, I'm going to play the G major chord instead of a ninth because uh, the ninth would be that A again. So uh, now I get to play the G major, and that gives me the ninth, which is a really nice sound um, uh, to have all those notes ringing. And again, I can hold that note there and uh, add in um, the G there. The next chord uh, is in the left hand is that uh, C major over E, uh, and the next uh, melody line I like to play here is, which is uh, G C A. That's a really nice open. So A makes it uh, a little bit of tension there from that A. Then coming down in that line, G, C, A, G, F, and now I'm going to do a little move which is going to allow me to change my position, uh, which I like to do to get to uh, notes uh, that I like the sound of better. So I could have played it like this, um, but uh, I've already decided prior to this point, uh, because I've worked out the melody of the verse before I started working on the introduction, that I want to play the melody here, because I like that sound of being able to hold those two notes out together. And if I play the melody here, I can't do that. I can't double up on um, those two notes and keep them ringing over each other. So I like to go. So I'm going to be able to do that with the melody there. So those notes are um, coming down into the melody. C, G, C, A, G, F, pull off to the E, and then I'm going to slide down to the D, which is a move I like to do a lot. And again, I cover this kind of position shifting uh, concept in the DVD uh, pretty thoroughly. But here what I'm doing basically is stitching these two positions together. Uh, by virtue of using that little slide move there. And I can hold this note out a lot. It, it, it's not holding the bottom note of the chord like I was doing with the left hand, or even earlier with the right hand, but it still uh, keeps that, um, that tone, those tones ringing over each other, which uh, we really want to try to get as much of that as we can. Again, because we don't have open strings, we don't have a sustain pedal, and this can kind of uh, thicken up the sound. So I'm going... Uh, Now I'm ready to start the melody with the right hand, which is here. So these are the notes, D, C, E. 
So uh, I'm basically playing in, a, in a, a scale position for C major. The song is in C major. And here's um, the third finger scale. So those of you who've uh, studied uh, my books uh, or the DVD know about this is the third finger scale. The lowest note we're going to use here is the G. Uh, if I were to be playing it in this position, That would be the second finger scale. So C there uh, with the second finger. If I was playing it in this position, which I could have done. Uh, I mean, I started out the introduction there. So if I was going to stay in that same position, that's where I would have ended up playing the melody. But I don't like the sound of that as much as I like it here. Being able to hold those notes against each other, and I really like the timbre of that string there. So position shifting allows you to get to lots of different places on the board, so you can choose the notes that sound the best to you, instead of just choosing the notes that uh, happen to be where your hand happens to be at any given moment. Don't be afraid to move around the board. Uh, don't park your hands and just play in positions. Move around. And so you'll notice um, that I'm using a lot of hand energy here, instead of just going my fingers, my hand plays back towards the nut, up towards the bridge, down towards the nut, up towards the bridge. So that's all I'm going to do on the melody to uh, keep those notes ringing too, is to hold that note out and then pull off to it. And keep that other note ringing. Well, I do. So uh, when you hear that with the chords in the left hand, that really extends the sound of that F major chord. So I've got F, C, A, C, D. almost sounds like one big chord going on. And there, at the end of that, I want to harmonize that chord a little differently. I'm going to play that G underneath it. The second part uh, of the verse, I'm going to play uh, this, holding down this double stop. And then, um, so that's a G and C. And what's nice about that is that it keeps that C going. Really nice tension in there. And then after that, come down to play this C major over E and in the right hand I'm going to play a B over a G so that really makes that uh, C major chord sound even more like an E minor chord which I think is just a beautiful lush kind of a sound out this A, this D here the whole time. So that D is ringing over the top of everything too. Now one thing you might notice about my right hand too is that I'm not trying to play with my fingers over the top of all the notes like this. I'm letting my hand stay nice and relaxed so I can do these double stops and pull-offs very easily. Um, if you try to play with your fingers over the top of the board all the time, it's harder to use this nice uh, fleshy part of your finger. So when I play this part here, my finger's really laying down there. Instead of like this, which is very uncomfortable. 
I'm actually laying this first finger on top of this string, but it doesn't matter because I'm playing it further up the board. You'll notice when I play these repeated notes with my right hand, that I'm not just using my finger to do it, which is very awkward and you feel it down in here. Hand movement is what's driving this. Using my whole hand and my arm. Which is much faster. And then down for that uh, second verse. So remember, I've got this uh, C major with the C in the bass. Harmony there, E over G. I played the wrong chord. So then here, what I'm going to do is uh, go back to that A minor down here. Now listen to that. I've got B and G, and I'm throwing that A in the bass. Really nice, beautiful sound. So that's a ninth with the B. Sevens with the G. Sliding up into the F there again. Keep the motion going. Always try to keep the left hand moving. So now when I get into the to the chorus. double stops thicken up the sound and add to the dramatic effect of what's going on uh, with the left hand chords so um, the melody here uh, at the chorus you'll notice I'm not going to play this the same way so it just depends on how I come into uh, each one of these repeated sections here Now my first finger is down here. I'm going to come in here with my second finger. But I don't want to... I don't want to release that uh, second finger in that same way. Because I can get a smoother transition by, by alternating the fingers through it. A lot of people you would see would play repeating the same finger. To me, that just doesn't sound nearly as smooth. I'm going to play this chord here, so I'm going uh, double stop here. And the second time I go three, two, one. So two, one, two, three, two, one, three, two, one. And now I'm already in position to play the rest of this part up here. Whereas if I had my second finger here, or my third finger here, uh, I'd have to make a much bigger move. So sometimes these things uh, just work out on their own. And sometimes you have to take a step backward in order to be able to set up a fingering that's going to come next. And again, this nice big fat chord here, G, B, G, B, E, over A minor. And as I'm coming into this part here, um, I don't play the same harmony. So There's a really nice combination there, C and E over the F major. Then again, the same thing. You might uh, normally choose to go to the B underneath there, but I like the sound of that C. 
And here, I'm not playing the C at all in my right hand. I've just got a nice, uh, the G and the E. And I'm already in position to start the next round of the chorus with a pull-off. So now I'm going one, two, one, instead of two, two, one, two. All right, so and even yet one more fingering iteration there. And here I like to add a little bit of motion in the left hand. Then a nice little rest there. Let me go back to the introduction again. That little s slide in the left hand. So that's about it. Uh, the, the last verse of the tune, I just mix up the chords in the left hand. Then resolve at the end of the line. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same. So when I get to those last chorus, I like to use uh, the power chord, a drone chord for the F, uh, as well as the G. So I go like this. Uh, and instead of the lighter approach like that, I'm gonna go down here and play the. Throw in a little passing tone to the, to the C resolving there. F power chord. So like this. the last line. And at the end here, I like to throw in these passing tones again. The passing line again. G, C, E. because it's a little lighter here at the end. Then a little more animated in the left hand. C, G, E, D, C, A, G, F. That end with that little C. Uh, well, I hope you have a lot of fun uh, trying to work out the tune. And again, all of the basic technique elements uh, that I'm using here are uh, found in my basic freehands technique DVD, um, chapter 14 for chords in the bass, and then the chapter, uh, the whole section on melody movement in the right hand. Uh, one last thing I want to mention is um, always when you're working on things, try to get your body involved. You'll notice uh, in the re recording of the song, I'm moving, my foot's moving. Uh, I try to have a physical reference for my hands to the beat uh, always so that they're not just relating to each other. Uh, and this concept of the time base is also covered in the DVD. So here's the complete version of the tune with the tabs uh, at uh, the normal tempo. And uh, um, hope it's been helpful to you. And um, look forward to doing more of these videos. Uh, happy tapping. <laughs>